Hello, everyone. Welcome to Studio Free Press Matters. My name is Flora Schulte Nortold, and I will be your host for today. At Studio Free Press Matters, we talk about the work we do with over 90 local media organizations worldwide, all aimed at protecting and promoting press freedom and access to reliable information. Today, we'll talk about Afghanistan, and we will do that with my colleague, Antonia Mednanski, who is responsible for Free Press Unlimited's Emergency Response Fund, and with Afghan, uh, Afghan fixer, Syed Khalil, who recently had to evacuate Afghanistan due to the crisis there. A very warm welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining us. Khalil, we'll start with you. Um, first of all, thank you so much for willing to share your story with us today. I mean, the whole world, of course, has been watching the crisis unfold in Afghanistan these last couple of weeks, um, but you actually experienced it and lived through it. Um, and I can only begin to imagine how incredibly hard that must have been. So let me start off by asking you, how are you? And how have these past few weeks been for you? Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm fine. And yes, so we are um, feeling comfortable here. We are safe here. But uh, still we are thinking and we have concern about our families who left in Kabul. Yeah, of course. How long have you been here in the Netherlands? I arrived uh, here on 24th of uh, August, so almost one month. Almost one month. And did you arrive with your whole family? Were you able to bring everyone? Uh, no. Um, due to the security reasons, I was living in a sep uh, hiding place in a separate house in Kabul. And uh, my family and children, they were uh, living in uh, another place. So I succeeded just to bring my four children with me and uh, my wife and other children, they are still in Kabul. Okay, so your family has been split now. How, how yes. many are still back, uh, back home for you? Um, yeah, um, my eight children. The eight children? Eight, elder one is 16 years old and the smallest one is uh, two and a half years old. So yeah. they are uh, with uh, my wife in Kabul. Could you maybe uh, elaborate a little more on what it is you do as a fixer? Because I don't think everyone completely yeah. understands what that is. Um, as a fixer, I was uh, organizing meetings for Better Dam and uh, other Western journalists like... Better Dam, the Dutch journalist? The, ju mm -hmm. the Dutch journalist. I worked with her from May 2015 until uh, 2019. Yeah. And I, uh, she invited me here in February 2019. I was in Amsterdam okay. for the opening ceremony of her book. Uh, so I, I was uh, uh, arranging her meetings uh, for with sources with with my sources because mm -hmm. uh, I worked as a human rights and peace activist. I had uh, broad based, uh, based network. Uh, network. So I was um, organizing meetings for her for her interview. Then she was. Uh, I then I was also evaluating uh, her interviews. Uh, okay. The to uh, because I also am an uh, analyst. Okay. So, um, yeah, and uh, during her, her travel uh, to the region in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. so I was facilitating yeah. uh, her travels. And you did that for, for other journalists as well, yeah, right, I believe? Five to six years I uh, did for uh, Better Dam and also for yeah. um, other uh, Western journalists yeah. from different country, uh, countries, but especially for with the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. With, uh, with Margarita and uh, Jessica and others. But the link, of course, why you're here in the Netherlands is with, with Better Dam. Yeah, so you did a whole bunch of work. And through that little, the, those years with Betty Dam, you are here at this moment, right? Sure, yes. And could you, if you're comfortable, um, walk us through a little bit what happened from the moment that Kabul fell and the Taliban took over and everything started deteriorating quite rapidly. Could you maybe walk us through what, what, what happened for you then? Yeah. Uh, we were not expecting such mm -hmm. a sudden collapse uh, because we were closely watching the peace process in negotiation between the U.S. Taliban and the previous Afghan government. And there, were, there was an agreement between the U.S. and Taliban. The Taliban will not enter to the Kabul city until 31st of August. But unfortunately, uh, President Ghani left uh, the presidential mm -hmm. palace in Afghanistan and uh, the Americans told to the Taliban that they cannot guarantee the security of Kabul. So they entered to the Kabul city and uh, uh, in meanwhile, meanwhile uh, ISKP, um, ISIS uh, for Khorasan province, they, um, they launched some attacks and they killed 
many people, in, especially in Kabul in Ngarhar province, they attacked on our house uh, in oh, Jalalabad wow. on 13th of August, on the same day when Taliban were entering to Kabul in Jalalabad. Wow. And they killed uh, my brother Asadullah. I'm so sorry uh, to hear. So, and they were uh, following me to kill me. So that's why I left my house on the same day. And I hide in, in a separate house until I left uh, Kabul on 23rd of uh, August. Wow. So, um, yes, it was too difficult. And, uh, but uh, fortunately, due to the um, assistance of uh, Gentine and Betty Dam in yeah. the foreign ministry uh, and the Dutch soldiers, so I succeeded to yeah. enter to the airport. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear about your brother. And... Um Condolences, but uh, thank you for sharing that story with us. Um, and as you say, they were—you had a target on you, perhaps just as your brother. They attacked your house. Why did they have a target on you? Was that because of your role as a fixer? Uh, because I'm a well-known person in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I worked on a peace process since 2004, and I'm an author and a political analyst. And my wife, uh, she's a member of the Afghan Parliament. Uh, so I served as a country director for Pagwash conferences on science and world affairs. Okay. And for the United Nations, uh, European Union, I worked as a consultant and advisor on peace process. And I had uh, my uh, a local NGO called Afghanistan Peace Studies Organization. So we, are, we were working on peace process and women rights, especially human rights. Uh, so... Um, it was an issue related to the human rights. Uh, yeah. The Afghan government hand over uh, some widows and children to that NGO. And yeah. I am the founder of this, that NGO. Oh. So in that NGO, some female who were uh, their husband fraud, gave fraud to them and they brought them from Pakistan and India through Dubai and Iran to Afghanistan. So um, they released in the government, Afghan government uh, handed over these females to our organization. And uh, I had an interview with them, and some of them, you know, I found that they were innocent, uh -huh. uh, and they were not members of ISIS. So they, they, they didn't want to go back to join ISIS. Yeah. So that's why I sent uh, two of them to my village with their two, two children. One were, one were uh, from Pakistan, and the other was from India. Okay. And uh, um, I coordinated this issue with the United Nations Human Rights uh, Branch in Kabul, to send them back to their families in Pakistan and mm -hmm. India. So, uh, yes, yeah, so ISIS uh, found and they understood that uh, I had an, this yeah. woman. And when someone joined ISIS, so their children and family, it's like property of ISIS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When someone kills, so immediately they are marrying the, the, the wife, the, his wife to other yeah. people. So they were very innocent and they had only small, small children, two, two children. And then uh, ISIS uh, um, kidnapped one of my friend, Nasrullah, and on the uh, 29th of uh, July. This year? Yeah, yes. And then they texted me from his WhatsApp to come to Jalalabad for a meeting. Okay. So I understood he would disappear for 40 ho 48 hours. So I didn't go. Then they took the address of uh, our house from my friend, and they attacked on uh, our house. They killed my brother and these two innocent uh, ladies with their two children. So they took this, wow. this, this, this woman with them. And still there were three other missing that they went to their families. And ISIS was believing that uh, I uh, hidden them from them. So that's why they were looking for them mm -hmm. and they were trying to find me to, yeah. and to took them, take them and to kill me. Yeah. So that's so why uh, their plan was that they killed my brother. I have to go to uh, to his uh, funeral, yeah. and they attack on me. So that's why I understood, and I didn't go. To yeah. So India. it seems uh, from this story, you have a whole bunch of work that you were doing there, and your little your link with um, the Netherlands yes. was that in, you were in, a but fixer. It was, I, I was fixer because you know you know my name is in Betty Dam's uh, yeah. book. I yeah. Book for her Maybe you can explain a little bit yes, about what you did there for as her a fixer. And also on Pagwash, they they uh, release and they publish. Uh, an article, uh, mm -hmm. SKP, uh, on 1st of September. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, they published my photo 
uh, in different photos they took from Google and that uh, they wrote that I work for Pagwash and for Betty Dam and like this. I'm uh, mm, working for Jews in Christianity and like this. Yeah, so yeah. I, I was working. You had a target on your on mind. your head, and uh, it's it's it sounds like an incredibly yeah. hard journey. Um, but you were one of the lucky ones to get out. Um, if yeah, if we can call it that, um, and you've been here for almost a month, are you able to? Because the work you did was also with women's rights, as you say, and human rights. I'm assuming that that is not possible to continue your work from here. Uh, no, I want to continue my work because I have friends yeah. there. Uh, are you able to from from remotely in the Netherlands? Um, yeah. After I get uh, documents like uh, residence visa yeah. and others, so then I think uh, legally I can work from here. Even uh, I'm here physically, but yeah. uh, I can online work, continue my work, because uh, okay. I, wor I want to work for, for so Afghanistan, and especially for this, uh, innocent women. Yeah. I want to continue my work for women's rights. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. And uh, well, let's hope that you get your paper soon. Um, which is in the process. I'm just going to go over to you, Antonia, um, because these last few weeks, uh, especially in your role as the, the uh, member of the t uh, emergency response team, um, you, of course, are regularly in contact with journalists in need, and you, of course, regularly hear distressing stories. But I can, ma I can imagine that these past few weeks really were a completely different ballgame. Um, Indeed. How how are you doing after these past weeks? Um, it's been very intense weeks. Um, it's been yeah very intensive weeks also work wise, and um, this kind of situation was something that we never dealt with before uh, with our reporters response team because usually we get support requests, um, but not evacuation requests. So this was for us a very new situation, um, and yeah. Improvising. Improvising. There was a lot of improvising. We set up very quickly a crisis team together with the policy and advocacy team and tried to combine all yeah, efforts. Yeah. Right, because uh, as I've, I've seen your you and your team work from the sidelines, I, you literally worked day and night uh, to try to evacuate as many Afghan media workers as possible. Uh, could you walk us through from the moment, the same question that Kabul fell, so you had to improvise, you set up this team, what happened? Then you received many requests. Yes. I know the inbox kind of exploded from yes. that moment. How did you handle that? Well, like we actually started in the beginning of August um, with lobbying, and that of especially the policy and advocacy team did um, mm -hmm. at the Zweite Kamer. And um, then in this time, we already helped a couple of journalists in Afghanistan to find shelter in um, safe houses because we already kind of yeah, got signs of the situation is getting very yeah, tricky and challenging. Um, yeah, that being said, that couple felt that quickly came as a surprise, but luckily we already uh, were in contact with the Ministry of Culture and Media and we're already busy with setting up a list of journalists and fixers in Afghanistan that had connections with Dutch media. Yeah, because about that list, so that's one of the successes that um, you can tell me in a second how mm -hmm. many journalists you were able to evacuate. But that list, how did you know who had to be on that list? Was that information that you already had or did you need to quickly locate that information from? No, yeah, it, it kind of like came to us in uh, yeah through several channels. Um, journalists reached out themselves yeah, to us and stated in their references, their Dutch references and contacts, but also lots of Dutch journalists directly contacted us and um, introduced us to Afghani fixers and journalists. And then we very quickly vetted and verified everything to make up this list. Okay, because um, everyone from the list, how many were here You um, in the end? In the end, like we managed to evacuate 27. 27, um, excluding families, right? Excluding families, yeah. exactly. And most of them are now in the Netherlands, but some also in Spain and in Belgium. Where Khalil, of course, yes. is one of them. Exactly. Which is amazing. Yes. Um, just a round off question. Mm -hmm. um, the official evacuation uh, period is over now. Mm -hmm. But that, of course, doesn't mean that your work stops. How do you proceed from here? What is what is still possible? How can you still help journalists in need that 
have been left behind, so to say. In Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, that's very tricky. We're looking into it at, yeah, at that. At the moment, we received around 500 requests. And of course, we try to help as many as possible. But since the banks are still closed, it's very tricky to get funds in. Um, the safe houses are in desperate need to get funded. Otherwise, yeah. you cannot secure them. So we're also looking into ways of how can we get money into Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, we're trying to um, help Afghani journalists and fixers who also made it outside of Afghanistan. So and it's uh, it's on ongoing. It's an ongoing moment. process. Yes. What's what's your view on that, Khalil? Do you do you agree with the help? Is is that what's necessary in Afghanistan at the moment? Sure, there because lots of people there uh, left here. Yeah. And, uh, Are you still in contact with? Yes, I'm. Old with, colleagues or? Yes, I'm in contact with colleagues. Some of them uh, they left to Pakistan. Uh, and they are waiting um, uh, to come here or to other countries. Some of them I think here, some other countries, uh, they already started the process uh, of ev evacuation, uh, restarted the process from Islamabad, like Australia, Germany, and some other countries. Yeah. So we hope that uh, our colleagues, they also assist as much as they can. Yeah. Yeah, to evacuate. Uh, to evacuate there. And, and um, of course, there's also still some, uh, some Afghans who have evacuated that are here in the country. Uh, you are one of them. What is it that you need now? I know that you're setting up a sort of buddy system. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Um, yes, um, the buddy system is actually like meant to um, connect um, Afghani evacuees um, to people in the Netherlands in case they have questions about the immigration procedure yeah. um, and, and to of course like also gather what are the needs now and how can yeah. we uh, maybe like build some connection to Dutch media so they can at some point also continue to work. Yeah, well let's hope that within Afghanistan and also for all Afghans like yourself who have uh, evacuated that we can still best help. Um, one thing is certain, both of you are doing extremely important work. So thank you very much for all your commitment. And of course, for being with us here today. Uh, we hope to see you again next time. And I wish you all both all the best of luck in your future work. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you. And to all those watching from home, thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to see you again next time. In the meantime, if you'd like to follow us and the work that we do, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on social media. Have a great rest of your day.